You're watching Ladies in the Locker Room. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. I'm Brett Douglas, and welcome to this edition of Ladies in the Locker Room. Tonight, we have a special guest. His name is Ken Gustafson, and he is the play-by-play -play broadcaster for the Georgia State women's basketball team. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. From every Monday night at 7 p.m. for a live taping of our show at the Hudson Grill, located at 6317 Roswell Road in Sandy Springs, Georgia. The Hudson Grill is the best place in town to watch your team get down for sports, food, spirits, and fun. The Hudson Grill. And we're back. First of all, I want to say thank you for joining the ladies in the locker room. And I'd like to introduce my special guest, Mr. Ken Kistofson of the Georgia State Panthers Ladies Basketball. Welcome to Ladies in the Locker Room. It is great to be with, here with you today. Good. Tell me a little about, about how you became an announcer for Georgia State. Well, I went to a school called Complete Game Broadcasting, run by a man named Jeff Batten, okay. uh, located over in Atlanta, Georgia, off of... Uh, Claremont Road and I-85, okay. and they teach you all of the ins and outs of sports broadcasting, from sports writing, to camera work, to video editing, to doing play-by-play. -play. Excellent. And doing play-by-play -play is something I've always wanted to do, uh, ever since I was about 14 years old, okay. and I decided to get involved in it, and I went through the 13-week course, and got the graduation certificate, and uh, put together a demo, and sent it over to Georgia State, they really liked it, and lo and behold, I got the job. Wow. I mean, I love that. And, and it's so awesome to see you just say, hey, this is what I really want to do. I'm just going to go do it. That's right. You know, that's what's great about America. You can be what you want to be if you're willing to work hard for it just and do what it takes. It. Excellent, excellent. So I hear they've got a little point guard over there that's kind of shaking some things up. Tell me a little bit about that. Her name is Alicia Andrews. She's a redshirt junior from right here in Atlanta, in the Stone Mountain, Georgia okay. area. Right. She is from Redan High School. She is our starting Redan. point guard. She's 4'11". Hold on, wait, hold on. Did you say 4'11"? 4'11". Wow. Yes, yes, ma'am. And she's right here from Georgia, Redan High School. That's correct. Okay. Okay, well, let me stop you before you go any further. Because, first of all, I, I just love hearing that. I was a five-foot-tall point guard. And everybody thinks you got to be so tall to be a point guard. But if you can shoot, you can shoot. And that's it, and that's all. So tell us a little bit more about this 4'11 point guard. Well, she can shoot the basketball. She's a very, very good three-point shooter. Okay. She's a great dribbler, a good passer. She's made some behind-the-back passes in a few games. Like and she's an excellent defender. She will she will get low as, as a person with the, with the basketball. She'll get down. She's gotten several steals and created points off turnovers for Georgia State, and has just done a super job for the Panthers. Wow! So she's shaking them up a little bit. Huh? She is shaking them up indeed. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love that. So when you announce, I mean, like what is like you know a lot of announcers they create a, a sound or a, a call to say, hey, we know who that is. So give me some information about what people hear when you make your announcements for Georgia State. Well, what I do, technically, I'm the color commentator. I am a play-by-play -play man, but I do a lot, mostly color commentating. Drew Hinesley is the main play-by-play -play guy. I he, he tells you what's happening. I tell you why it happens. I will give you a reason. Well, they, you know, Georgia State did a good job here. By, by creating turnovers on pressure defense. Okay. They did a good job here, if, if, or I'll say something like, uh, they need to do this in order to score. They need to be more patient on offense. They need to get rebounds. I, I give you what's, I, I give you more insight. Okay. I give you a little bit below the surface. Whereas okay. the play-by-play -play guy, it's just see it, say it. He tells see you what happens, I tell it. you why it happens. Got it, got it, got it. So now, okay. A lot of people just don't think commentators are a big deal. I know that there are a lot of famous commentators from a lot of the colleges and the sports team. Mm -hmm. uh, are you ready to rumble? Was a very famous commentator. And then uh, I guess the University of Georgia commentator. Lots of different commentators. How far do you feel you want to go with commentating? Is that what you want? Do you want to go to the pros someday or stay with college or move on to a Big Ten? Tell me about that. I would like to go to the pros someday. Maybe the Atlanta Hawks uh, once Steve Holman retires okay. or, or perhaps another NBA team in another city somewhere, maybe a major college program somewhere else. 
if not Georgia or, or Georgia Tech. Uh, but right now, I'm very happy where I am at Georgia State. I love, I love the people at Georgia State. They're my family. They have embraced me uh, 100%, and I in turn embrace them, and I'm just enjoying the ride right now. That's excellent. Yeah, we love Georgia State as well, and I'm, I'm glad they had that program there. I think it's awesome. That school is just growing. Yes, it, it is. I've watched it kind of grow right up out of that little hole all down the street, all around a couple of blocks. They've got dorms now. I remember when they didn't have dorms downtown. That's right. So Georgia State is a growing school, so I love that, and I love that program. And they have a football team uh, yes, that, that, that struggled this year. They, they, they had a tough year this year, but they're going to get better and better yeah. as, as, as they get the recruits in. And, and same with women's basketball. The women's basketball team, uh, we, we've gotten off to a little bit of a rough start with two and six. We played some very tough teams. We, we played Georgia very well yesterday. We were up by 11, but Georgia came back. They beat us by 12. But still, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of talent on that Georgia State team, that women's team, and they're gonna have a good season this year, I believe. And tomorrow night, uh, if the folks would like to, to come out and, and see us over at Kennesaw State, uh, the, Pan the Panthers will be playing uh, Kennesaw State tomorrow night uh, at KSU. That's Tuesday uh, night, December Tuesday 3rd. Tuesday night, December 3rd. Okay. Uh, come on out and see us. If you cannot make it to the game, you can tune us in on 88.5 FM WRAS. You can hear right. Drew Hinesley do the play-by-play, -play, play, the play-by-play, -play, the see it and say it. And you can hear me do the color commentating and, get, and, and, and give you the insights. Oh, right, the analytical part. Yes, that's correct. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for joining us on Ladies in the Locker Room today. We will be watching the Georgia State Panthers, and we're going to come out and check out that little 411 point guard, because I think that's off to awesome. And thank you for joining us tonight. You are welcome. It's great to be here. Thank you. We'll be right back. What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, it's Hattie, and this is my Sports Quickie. Well, I got to jump right into college football. We have had the upset of all upsets in college football. And you can tell it was an upset if you look at the footage of the players when the game was over. And I'm talking about the Auburn and the Alabama game. I mean, they just knew Alabama had it. But all the way down to the last few seconds of the game, Auburn wins the game, knocking Alabama out. Roll Tide did not roll well that night. That was the upset for the week for college football. Next, I want to talk about D. Rose. Let me tell you something. We do a segment called Poor Baby, and I just want to say Poor Baby for D. Rose. I'm talking about none other than Derrick Rose from the Chicago Bulls. Now, whether you're a Bulls fan or you're not a Bulls fan, but you, if you're a football fan, you were upset to hear that Derrick Rose is out and hurt again. Because if you're a fan of the game, like myself, you want to see Derrick playing. Derrick Rose, first of all, he, he went through all kind of flack last year because he stayed out too long from his ACL injury. Too long in other people's eyes. But in Derrick's eyes, he needed the time, he needed to rest, he needed to heal. So he took extra time to come back and come strong. This injury this time to Derrick Rose, I think was felt all around the NBA. I don't care if you're a Chicago fan or not. If you're a basketball fan, the injury to Derrick Rose was felt. When I tell you anybody that I talk to and everybody that I watch, I watch the tweets from different players, everybody is, is hurt for Derrick Rose. And I just want to say, first it was the ACL. This time it was the left meniscus. Okay, so it was the other leg last time. This time it's the, the left leg, it was the right leg, now it's the left leg. So now he's had injuries back to back on both his legs. Physically, I know he's gonna heal, but mentally, I just need to know, mentally, I'm sure, so I hope somebody's, uh, in, 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 in women's terms, I wanna say I hope somebody's there to hold his hand, because uh, I feel so bad for him. So Derek Rose, ladies in the locker room are sorry, and uh, look, we'll come hold your hand, whatever. We want you to get well, we want you to be well mentally. We don't want you to, you know, let this kick you down, because whatever's meant for you is meant for you. You gotta understand that and let it go. And we're rooting for you, you'll be back. Another NBA news, uh, Golden State Warriors. Golden State decided they wanted to live up to their name. Uh, and they decided they wanted to fight, a nice a big fight. Uh, <laughs> the Golden State Warriors and the Portland Trailblazers, I think it, uh, oh, it cleared the bench. There were so many people that got out there involved in that fight. However, LaMarcus, LaMarcus Aldridge, was fined $45,000 because they claimed he started the fight. 
Now, if you saw the fight, a lot of elbows flying, a uh, little, you know, a few elbows here, a little this, a little that. But forty-five thousand dollars in the pocket—that's a lot. Uh, it was only three minutes and forty-two seconds left in the third quarter, and the things just got really ugly. It, like I said, it was a bench clearer. Wesley, Wesley, Matthews, um, the Golden State uh, forward, Dramon, uh, both they were fined twenty thousand um, dollars and suspended for one game. Uh, Lee. Bogut, Green, they all got uh, texts. And then Matthews and Williams was ejected from the game. If you saw this game and you saw this fight, it just seemed like it started innocently under the basket and one elbow turned into a hit and then the hits, they started grabbing. Next thing you know, like I said, the benches started clearing, everybody got out there. The referee got shuffled around a little bit. So it was a mess. Well, $45,000 here, $20,000 there. You, you got a bunch of things going on, so we'll see what happens. Let's talk about the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks starting off pretty decent this year. Uh, they're 9-9. Nine and nine. They're second in their division. Uh, and they've earned the title of one of the better uh, offensive teams in their division. So that's excellent to see. Now, they've got a tough schedule. If you're an Atlanta Hawks fan, really tough schedule for December. Um, let me see. They've got Cleveland. They've got L.A. They've got the Knicks. They've got Miami. Uh, they've got o o o OKC. Tough, tough December schedule. But they're looking pretty good, looking pretty strong. We're going to see what's going to happen. Um, the Atlanta Hawks this year, I know we lost a few players. We gained a few players. But they're looking like they want to do something. So don't sleep on our Hawks. Don't sleep on the Hawks. Keep watching. Now let's talk about a little football action. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is there was a little incident that happened last week in the Steelers game where the Steelers coach kind of jumped on the field and jumped off. Uh, was it innocent or was it on purpose? I don't know. He just kind of, you know, looked like he tried to catch the player off guard. Looked like he did want to interfere a little bit. Uh, I think that there are penalties for that. However, he just kind of went away. Nobody said anything. No harm done. I'm really surprised. I hope it was, you know, innocent because I really like the Silla coach. I think he's done a great job with his organization, and I don't think he's that dirty of a player. I hope not. But, hey, it was something else. Let's talk about our Atlanta Falcons. Okay, somebody tell me what happened this week. The Atlanta Falcons won. Not only did they won, they won convincingly. The Atlanta Falcons played this week like the team that we expected to see from the beginning of the season. I mean, in every position, on offense, on defense, they were running, they were tackling, they were scoring. They did, they did really, really well. Um, for a team that's three and nine, these are the teams that you don't want to meet while you're chasing the playoffs. With a, with a, you know, with a record like three and nine, they're not going anywhere, but they're just making it harder for the other teams. Uh, the Buffalo Bills being that other team. The Falcons won over the Buffalo Bills, and it was a great fight. It was a great game. And as I said, it's the game we've wanted to see all season. Now, some people will say, well, what happened? Well, I'll tell you one of the things I noticed that happened. I noticed that the coach is playing a lot of the guys off the bench. He's playing those rookies. He's playing those second and third string guys. Now, if that's why they're looking so good, uh, one might say, hey, why haven't you put him in a long time ago? Maybe we'd still be in the playoffs or still be in the running. I don't know. And I'm just saying. I like Coach Mike, and, and I think he's doing, a, he's doing a great job. But, hey, we know we definitely need to do better. So I hope by playing the second string guys and playing these um, guys from the other teams, uh, I mean from the, the bench, I hope he's seeing the talent he needs to see so that we will come back next year and we'll be stronger. Now the problem with that is we won't have Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez came back because he saw what you saw on Sunday. He saw a team that looked like they would make it and that's why he came back. And that's the only person I really feel bad for because nobody wants to just play a season out and, and not do anything. He's broken a couple of records. He's still Tony Gonzalez, number 88, the player that we all love. And But we did, we wanted the Falcons to go a little bit further. So we just want to say, Tony, we love you, and good luck, whatever you're going to do. And if you change your mind and you want to come back one more year, 
we'll still have you. I don't think anybody would doubt that. If Tony Gonzalez decided he wanted to play one more year, we'd love to have him. This is your girl, this is Hattie, and this has been my Sports Quickie. You're watching Ladies in the Locker Room, and we're here tonight at the Hudson Grill in Sandy Springs, Georgia. Each week, we have a different topic of discussion where we like to talk between ourselves, but this week, we've invited some friends to join us in this discussion. Tell us, everybody, who you are. Clef Styles. Daniel Aiken. So, we've in invited Clef and Daniel to come up here and discuss with us about a report that was printed in USA Today. Now, there was a story in USA Today that said that African-American athletes are arrested far more times than Caucasian American athletes. Now, the question is, do you think it's because the African-American athletes are just bad, they get in more trouble, or do you think it's profiling? Let's start with you, Nina. What do you think? Well, I think it is a little bit of profiling because just like our young African-American males and minority males get into more trouble as far as with different types of altercations, I think it works the same way with the athletes. They may get a little more leeway, but I think it, they're still being profiled. Okay. How about you, uh, Ebony? Well, I think it's the African-American males that are getting into the trouble. Um, many of them, they go out and they start things um, with other people, so therefore they find themselves in those type of situations. So I think it's the males. Okay. And also with what Ebony said, I do think because of their situation that they're in, they may take advantage of that as well. Okay. All right, and Cliff? Well, actually, I think there's a bit of both. As we know, history would tell you that profiling has been going on for years. That's nothing new. Um, now, I think it's time for us as black people and athletes to take advantage of the positive stuff and don't fall in line with what they expect of you anyway. Okay. And then? I can definitely agree with that. Oh, we can't see you. Okay. You slide in. You go back over there. I can definitely agree with what everybody is saying about racial profiling. Uh, however, I do believe that there are more African Americans in the league and in these professional sports more than uh, other races. Um, and so it would always be a different uh, point of view. And, uh, but I definitely agree with the rest of the team with racial profiling. I think that the point that Daniel just made was very, you know, interesting. I think everybody kind of missed that, is that there are a lot of African Americans in the league anyway. There, there are more of them in the league. So there are more of them to get in trouble. Um, and yes, I do believe that it is racial profiling. Um, we talked earlier with Cliff and, and some friends, and then when you see a young African American man driving down the street in a Maserati or in a Bugatti, Automatically, people assume one or two things. Hopefully, he's an athlete or he's a drug dealer, you know? That's so that's the profiling part of it. And then sometimes the police just don't like the fact that, how, how did this little young African-American guy get a Bugatti or get a Maserati? So they want to stop him to find out why they ain't in anyway, which still goes back to profiling. So I think we all agree that there's some form of profiling, but as Ebony said, they still need to stop getting into so much trouble. And then that, as Cliff said, they still have to really straighten up and fly right and represent themselves better. And I have one thing to that. You certainly can. You made an excellent point with the, the numbers. But those numbers are reversed in society. Right. However, blacks are filled with jail. Yeah. So we got to look at it at yeah. both sides of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I spoke to you guys earlier, I used to work with uh, incorrigible teams. And I used to tell them all the time, when that judge and that prosecutor is looking across, across the aisle at you, they don't see their niece or their nephew. They see an animal that they want to put in a cage. And you've done a crime and they see an animal. But if you change it up and you look at, and I'm gonna give you an example, a couple years ago, there was a, uh, a bank robbery, which involved two young Caucasian women and one African-American guy. 
Now the Caucasian women are the ones who actually brought the note and presented it and walked out with the money. But they stood there and told them that the, the African American guy told them how to do it. So he ended up getting more time than they did and they actually committed the crime. Now he worked, turns out that he worked for the bank and he explained to them how, it, how easy it could be done and they did it. But I never understood how in the world the people who actually pulled it off got more time than the person who talked about it. Right. Because when that judge looked across that counter and he saw the cute little blonde girl and the cute little blue-eyed girl, he saw his granddaughter, he saw his niece. He didn't see the animal he wanted to put in jail. I believe that if there were two little African-American girls, they would've got a lot more time. I mean, that's just my thought. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think that's an excellent point. And the one thing I would add to that is my advice to young African-Americans is don't ever, ever put your future in a person with a robot, with a black robot. <laughs> don't do it. You control yourself. Don't let them decide your future. Excellent point. Thank you all for joining, ladies, in the locker room. This has been our discussion for the week. And if you'd like to chime in on our discussion, just, you know, look us up, ladiesinthelockerroom at gmail.com, and tell us what do you think. Do you think it's racial profiling, or do you think the African-American athletes are just too much trouble? Let us know. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.